Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how you can implement pagination for repeating groups in your Bubble app. This is qualified.ie, it's a job website I built on Bubble, and I have this one page called All Accounting Jobs that pretty much displays every job currently up on the site. As of now we have 85 jobs, so as you can imagine this repeating group takes quite a while to load, which isn't ideal. Users can scroll down through all 85 jobs, which admittedly is nice, but I think there might be a better way. So what I've done is I've built a pagination group feature. Uh, if you see, I'll scroll down to 20 jobs only, rather than 85, and I have this little set of numbers and an arrow here. And if I click on two, I'm brought up to the top of the page and I can see the next 20 jobs. And similarly, if I click on the arrow, I'm brought again to the next 20 jobs. So we're gonna look at how we can implement this for your own bubble app now. So we're back in our bubble editor, and the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have the toolbox plugin installed. It's this plugin here, it's a free plugin, so if you don't have it, just go to add plugins, search for toolbox, and make sure you have it installed. The reason we need that is we're going to do a few calculations to decide how many pages we need for the pagination feature. Once you've installed the toolbox plugin, this list of numbers, visual element, is going to become an option. So just put that anywhere on the page, it doesn't really matter. This is not going to appear on your bubble app, it is merely in the background making a few calculations. And this is used to decide how many pages we're going to have in our pagination feature for the repeating group. We're going to start at page one. We're going to go up by one page every time. So for example, I put two in here, we go one, three, five, etc. And then the length of the list. So how many jobs do we want on each page? I think 20 is a good number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to repeating group job, list of jobs, count, and we're going to go divide it by 20. As I mentioned, I currently have 85 jobs on the page site as a total so this means we're going to have five pages now that we know how many jobs are going to be on each page we need to edit our repeating group accordingly previously i would have had no fixed number of rows i'm now going to set this to 20. this means only 20 jobs are going to show up on each page next we're going to insert a group at the bottom of this section here which is going to house the various numbers and arrows for the pagination feature so we're going to go down we're going to go to group and we're going to put this in here we're going to put this element just below it. This won't be too much of a difference. As like I said, this isn't actually going to show up on the page, but just to make it more obvious. Okay, so we have our group here. We're going to give it some dimensions. We're going to make it a row. We are going to align it in the middle, both horizontally and vertically. We are not going to give it a fixed width. We're going to give it a min width of 280 and a max width of 1000. This is just to make sure it aligns with the other elements on the page. We'll give it a min height of 60 for now, which we might change depending on how it looks later. We're going to put in a repeating group then, uh, which is actually going to house the various numbers. So we're going to put that in there. We're going to have to do some editing again here in terms of formatting. We're once again going to make it a row. We are going to align it in the middle, both vertically and horizontally. We're not going to give it a fixed width again. We're going to give it a min width of, let's say, 280 and see how that looks, and a max width of 320. We'll give it a min height of 40 for now. And we are going to give it a certain number of cells. We are only going to give it one row, and we are going to give it five columns. Again, housing the five pages that we will have, 20 jobs per page, with a bit less for the last page because there'll only be five on it. The type of content is going to be number, and this is where the work we did earlier with the toolbox element is going to come in handy. The data source for this is going to be that list. So we calculated how many pages we're going to have, and we are going to say list of numbers, list. That's going to give us our five pages. Perfect. Next, we're going to put in a text element to represent the numbers. I'm going to put that in there. And we'll need to do a bit of editing here to make this look appropriate. We're going to get rid of the text that's in there. And we are going to give this some dynamic content. And it's going to be current cells number. So we should have a nice one, two, three, four, five. We're going to remove that style because it doesn't look great. And we're going to change some of the parameters here. So we're going to change the size to 20. We'll leave it as black font. And then we're going to change the font itself to uh, DM Sans, which is what I use throughout the site. Put that there. We're going to bold it. And we are also going to change the min height or the max height, because you can see it's taking quite a bit of space at the moment, which is not what we want. Uh, we are actually going to make it fixed width. I think we'll give it a width of, let's say, 30, and then also a fixed height of 30. And again, you can see it's taking up less space straight away. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. It's not in the center there. Uh, this shouldn't make too much variations, but we will just vertically align it. And then let's take a quick preview to see how we're looking at the moment. 
I'm hoping that we're going to see 20 jobs on this page and then a row of numbers one through five down in the bottom. That is the aim at this stage. We'll then add in some other features such as uh, highlighting depending on what page you're on and that kind of thing. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I think it loaded a bit quicker there. Hard to tell sometimes. But again, 20 jobs rather than the 85 we did have originally. One, two, three, four, five, making progress. Okay, two things now. We're going to first of all vert or horizontally align these numbers in each cell. And we're also going to get rid of these borders here as I feel they're a bit unnecessary. So we're going to vertically align that in the center. And it looks like it already is in terms of horizontal alignment, so that's fine. And we're going to get rid of those borders because they just don't really do much, I feel. So we'll come back to appearance and we'll get rid of none. Perfect. I uh, would also like a bit of a gap in between this group and uh, the job. So I'm just going to give this a bit of a margin at the top. I'll give it a margin of, say, 20 and see how that looks. Perfect. And this is where we're going to get into workflows now because we have our five numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and we want the jobs of the repeating group to change depending on what number we click on. So we're going to click on the text, which currently has a number in it, and we're going to use some workflows here to do that. So start edit workflow. And there are some special actions for repeating groups. Uh, so when text current cells number is clicked, we are going to go to element actions. We're going to go to repeating group and we are going to go to go to page. And the page we're going to go to is actually this cells number. So element and uh, it's repeating group job that we're concerned with and pages current cells number. So hopefully now when we click on two, three, four, and five, we're going to see the second 20 jobs, the third 20 jobs, etc. And we'll have made some progress. There will be some actions missing at this stage, but this is a good next step. Okay, pages loaded, one, two, three, four, five, six, roughly about 20 by the looks of it. Let's click on two and hopefully we'll see the jobs change. And if we click on three, yeah, so two has changed. If we click on three, it'll change again. Perfect. So the jobs are changing, which is good, but it's not ideal from the user uh, experience point of view because it's still staying down the bottom. So the next thing we're going to do is once we click on each page number, we're going to scroll back up to the top so the user doesn't have to do that manually. That's a fairly simple workflow. So what we're going to do is after we've gone to uh, the next page of repeating group job, we are going to go to element actions. We're going to scroll to, and we're going to scroll the text at the very top of the page. So the element is going to be text, uh, all accounting jobs, which is the top element on the page. And let's see how that looks. I suspect we'll have to do some sort of adjustment in terms of offsets, but let's just see how we get on first of all before doing that. Okay, again, jobs loading in a bit quicker than with the 83. We're on page one at the moment. Let's click on two, it goes up to the top and new jobs. That's not bad. I'd kind of prefer to go up to here rather than just down there. So I'm gonna give this a bit of an offset and I'm gonna give an offset of minus 100. So again, we're going to refresh the page and see how this looks. Scroll down, click on two. Yes, that's much better. And we're getting the new jobs each time. So, so that's quite good. Next, we're going to do some formatting of the numbers just because they look a bit ugly at the moment. And we're going to try and make it a bit nicer. So let's go back down to our numbers here. And the first thing we're going to do, which I actually just noticed was we hadn't aligned the text in the center. So we've done that. Next, we're going to change the background. Now we're going to give it a flat color and we're going to use this 44444 color that I do like. And we'll give it a shade of just 20 so that the black is still obvious. Next, we're going to give it a bit of roundness. We'll try 10 and we will see how that looks. And this can be useful because in a minute when we use custom states to highlight exactly what page it's on, it just makes it a bit clearer if you have some sort of distinctive formatting. So that's not too bad. I don't think that is bad at all. Bit of a gap in between the numbers, which I'm not mad on. So let's just uh, make this a bit tighter. And um, we can change the layout here. We can make this a bit bigger, perhaps. I'm going to change it to 35, 35. And we're also going to decrease the gap. So 35, 35. And we're going to make the repeating group uh, a min width of, let's say, 240 and a max of 280. Okay, and let's go back here again. And what we will do then is we will have each one of these uh, highlighted if it's on that particular page. So let's go down. Yeah, I think that's looking a bit better. Uh, not vertically aligned there for whatever reason. I think that's because I haven't centered the text. So let's go here into appearance and let's go to 
center of the text bar to view. Perfect. We're now going to use custom states to highlight the number if we're on that page uh, in terms of the job list. So we're going to go to the repeating group, number group. We're going to go to information. We're going to go to add new custom state. We're going to call this job page and we're going to give this a number. Default number is going to be one. And we can X out of this. And what we're going to say is when this cell's number is equal to the page number, we're going to have some formatting. So conditional when current cell's number is current cell's number. That is not correct. When current cell's number is, uh, we're going to go to repeating group numbers. And then that's going to be the custom state job page. Then we're going to have some formatting. That's a bit different. We are going to make the font color um, slightly different. We're going to make it white. And we're also going to change the background. So if we find background color, we're going to give this 444 and give it uh, 20. We're actually not. We're going to give it 100 just to distinguish it from the other ones. So then if we go back in here and refresh this, hopefully we should see that number one is going to be highlighted when we load the page because again it's on the first page of jobs and loading up and yeah sure enough you can see one looks a bit different to the other numbers because again we're on the first page of jobs problem at the moment is when we click on two then we scroll up we get new jobs but two is not highlighted so we're going to use some workflow actions to change that if we go back to our text we're going to go to start editor workflow we already have a couple in there but we're going to add in another one we are going to set the state of that repeating group and uh, number element. So set state of an element and uh, repeating group number and the custom state of job page is going to be equal to current cells number. So now when we click on two, two should become highlighted. When we click on three, three should become highlighted and so on and so forth. And obviously one should not be highlighted when we click on two. So let's see how that looks. Let's try three back up to the top third group of pages and yeah three is highlighted so that's pretty good the last thing we need to do is put in some arrows just so people can navigate between the pages a bit more intuitively so let's go back to our design and let's look for icon and we're going to slot this in this group here and we're going to format this in a fairly similar manner to the actual uh, repeating group so we're going to put the right arrow on this side obviously um, so let's just search for the arrow I do sometimes find the default bubble icons aren't always the best, but in this case, I think we should be okay. So we'll put that as right. And uh, we're gonna give this the same formatting as the text. And we're gonna give it a uh, fixed width and a fixed height. We're gonna make this a bit smaller than the numbers themselves. And we just need to make sure that's vertically aligned. Uh, we're also gonna give it a slight bit of a margin so it's not right on top of the numbers, uh, just from a UI perspective. Let's give that a margin of 15 on the left. And then we are going to give this a workflow action. So when you click on the right arrow, you should obviously go to the next page of jobs. So I'll start editor workflow. When the icon is clicked, we are again going to use those repeating group actions. So element actions, go to repeating group, uh, show next see if that works repeating group job and let's just see if that works there will be an issue that i don't think our formatting is going to change because we click on an arrow we're brought to a new page of jobs but we haven't told bubble to add one uh, to the custom state or anything like that okay so run the first page of jobs click on one and again new jobs come up which is exactly what we want and again and again so two things we need to do here. Number one is we need to change the custom state to make sure that the relevant job page gets highlighted. And the second thing we need to do is scroll that up to the top of the page. That's the easier one because we've already done that. So let's just go back into our previous workflow and copy that and paste it in here. We're also going to insert another action and we are going to change the custom state. So element actions, uh, set state. And again, it's going to be at a repeating group uh, number element that is key so repeating group number and we are going to change the job page custom state and because it's the right arrow what we're going to do is we're going to add one every time so what we just need to do is 
uh, take the existing value that's there and then just add one to it. Uh, so plus one. And then when we're doing the left, we're just going to take away one and we should get the same effect. So let's see if this worked. When we click on the right arrow this time, we should hopefully be brought to page two, scroll up to the top, and then two will be highlighted when we come back down at the bottom. So here we go on page one. Click on the next page. We get new jobs. We scroll back down to the bottom and we see the two is highlighted. Brilliant. That's exactly what we want. So now we're going to do the same for the left arrow. And that's going to be a lot easier because all we need to do is copy this and paste it in. We want it to be the left hand side. Obviously, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change this first to arrow left. And we are going to make it first. We have the row layout here, so we want it to be the first thing in it. We're going to change the margin to the right rather than on the left. Looks good. We're going to change the workflows associated with this as well. So at the moment, obviously, we have the right uh, workflows okay, but we don't have the left. So we can just copy one from the other. So instead of actually, no, let's do a bit of a new one for this because. We're actually showing the previous rather than the next. So show previous in repeating group actions. We need to set the repeating group. It's the repeating group job. Perfect. We can pretty much copy the other elements. Actually, no, we can't. Uh, we can nearly copy them, but we can't quite because we're going to be doing minus one this time around. So we had a plus last time. We're just going to change that to minus. And we're going to scroll back up to the top of the page. Excellent. So nearly there. There will be one additional thing we need to do after this to finish up the pagination feature, but quite close to the finish line at this stage. So we should have two arrows, one left, one right. Fantastic. When we click on this, we should be brought to page two. New jobs, scroll down, two is highlighted. And if we click on the left, we should be brought back to the first page, which we are, and one is highlighted. Excellent. The one last thing we need to do is there's no point having a left arrow when we're on one and there's no point having a right arrow when we're on five because these are the last pages. Uh, as you can see, you can't actually go and show a previous. And I imagine this is going to mess up the yeah the custom state formatting now, which is a bit of an issue. So let's do some formatting to hide those arrows at certain times. We're going to start off with the left hand arrow and we don't want this to appear when we're on page one. So we're going to say when repeating group number jobs page is one we're not going to have this element visible. Put in one, and again, this element is visible. We will leave that unchecked. The right arrow is a bit trickier because while we have five pages at the moment, we might have more in the future, and we want to make it somewhat dynamic. So what I suggest we do is we do when repeating group, actually, you know, when we say repeating group number uh, jobs page is the same as the last number in the original list we calculate it, uh, then we will not make it visible. Because obviously, if there's 120 jobs, then the last value for that will be six. So it will be somewhat dynamic. So we're going to say last item. And again, we're going to say this element isn't visible and leave that unchecked. So hopefully now when this page loads, we will see that the arrow next to the one is not visible. And then when we click on one of the other pages, it does become visible. And when we click on the last one, the right hand arrow will not be visible. So good start. We click on two, up to the top, new jobs. Sure enough, one appears. We click on it again, it seems to be working. And then we click on five, which is the last page. You can see there's less jobs, the right one disappears. So that's it, that's how you build the pagination group feature.